Good afternoon. It's five o'clock and I'd like to call the June 29th, 2022 regular board meeting of the Inglewood Unified School District to order. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with Assembly Bill 361, which amends the Ralph M. Brown Act um, to allow local governments to continue conducting virtual meetings. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask uh, our chief business official, Mr. Rafael Guzman, uh, to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Dr. Kuna. If you may please rise, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Guzman. Uh, next, uh, we will do roll. Ms. Zambrano, can you please take the roll? Sure. Board President, Ms. Margaret Turner Evans. Present. Board Vice President, Dr. Carlos McGee. Present. Board Member, Ms. Naomi Hammonds. Present. Board Member, Mr. Brandon Myers. Present. Board Member, Mr. Ernesto Castillo. Present. Dr. Arcuna. Present. Mr. Rafael Guzman. Present. Dr. Bernadette Lucas. Present. Ms. Shelley Ebena representing the Human Resources Department. Present. Please be informed the Spanish language interpretation is available during this meeting. Ofrecemos interpretación al español durante la junta. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zambrano. Okay, so uh, item four, approval of the agenda. Um, we uh, adopt the agenda with the following modifications. The, uh, both the certificated roster and the LCAP uh, have been revised and uploaded to the agenda prior to uh, the commencement of this meeting. Next, we have our recognitions. Uh, is that going to be Dr. Stephanie or is it going to be Ms. Ebner? Yeah, it will be me, Dr. Kuna. Oh, thank you, Dr. Stephanie. Please, go ahead. All right, well, thank you very much, um, board members, uh, Dr. Kuna and community members. It's a pleasure to recognize our employees that really do the uh, wonderful work for our students here in the Inglewood community. Um, next slide, please. Tonight, we're going to recognize the retirees, uh, folks that have spent most of their, a good portion of their lives serving kids in the Inglewood Unified School District. It's really amazing when you see these lists of folks that have worked with us for 30, uh, 40 years in some cases. Um, and we just wanna give them um, their moment to celebrate their great work they've done and say thank you um, for their dedication to, to serving our students. Next slide, please. So we're gonna start with our certificated, or I'm sorry, our classified retirees. First one is Roger, Wa uh, Roger Walker, a severely handicapped teacher's assistant from Ben Q Leadership Academy of Excellence, 43 years of service. Thank you, Roger. Um, Anna Yorba, a school office manager um, at Worthington Elementary, 39 years. Christy Onumulie, I apologize for that. I've been practicing all day and I messed up, so I'm sorry. But uh, a school office manager at Morningside High School for 35 years. Judy Thomas, records clerk at Inglewood High, 34 years. Bertha Robinson, senior nutrition service worker, Warren Lane Elementary, for 31 years. Martha Hernandez, instructional aide at Oak Street for 30 years. Leticia Gutierrez, a school office manager at Oak Street for 23 years. Elizabeth Villegas, severely handicapped uh, teacher assistant at Centinella Elementary for 20 years. Yolanda Hernandez Chavez, a nutrition service worker at Woodworth, Ele Woodworth Monroe TK8 Academy for 20 years. William Frank Weaver, a skilled maintenance a specialist generalist in the maintenance department for six years, and Terry Wheeler, our, execu our former executive director of information technology in the educational services department for five years. Next slide, please. And then we have our certificated retirees. Um, Richard Rankins, a teacher at Crozier School, middle school for 40 years. Daphne Clark, teacher at Payne Steam Academy for 34 years. Robin Wagner, teacher at Oak Street, for 32 years. Linda Smith, a teacher at Oak Street for 26 years. Denise Brooks, teacher at Oak Street for 25 years. Annie Hewan Kim, a teacher at Centinella Elementary for 22 years. Wanda Aubert, teacher at La Tijera Academy of Excellence for 20 years. 
Christine Batista, Morningside High School, 20 years. Maya Kudron, teacher at Woodworth Monroe TK8 Academy, 20 years. Thomas Capel, Payne Steam Academy, 19 years. Arnold, Arnold Fuller, teacher at Inglewood High for 18 years. Victor Blanco, special education teacher at Woodworth Monroe for 17 years. Wilson McKee, a teacher at Morningside High School for 16 years. Bruce Wolschlager, a teacher at Mo Morningside High School for 15 years. And Principal Gabriel Griego finished up his career at Morningside High School for a year. Thank you very much to all of our employees. Let's give them a big round of applause. Um, really appreciate all of your hard work and dedication to Inglewood Unified, making this district a better place. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Stephanie. Um, I know, I, I believe uh, I heard Ms. Evans once say, uh, talking about how long our employees uh, stay with Inglewood Unified School District. And this is uh, definitely a testament to, to that. And we wish everybody all the best in retirement. Um, board members, uh, anybody uh, who would wish to uh, speak regarding the recognition of our retirees? Well, I can say as a, as a retiree, those of you who have worked for 40 years and 30 years and who are not planning to go back to work again, this is the best club you could ever join. And I wish you well. Congratulations to all of you and the rest of you who might be going on to other things. I wish you well. In fact, I just signed up to go back to work myself. And with all these teachers retiring, I might need to come to work. Uh, we got a lot of vacancies going on there. so. Uh, I wish all of you well. I tell you, those of you who are retiring for good, you, you just can't wait for when school starts and you don't have to get up. That's just a wonderful feeling. Congratulations. Any other board members? Thank you, doctor. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, moving on to uh, item six, which is our reports and uh, presentations. Uh, first up, we have uh, Dr. Lucas, who will provide a presentation regarding the California School Dashboard Local Indicators Update for Inglewood Unified School District and uh, the two dependent charter uh, schools, La Tierra and City Honors. Dr. Lucas. Dr. Kuna, thank you so very much. Good evening, board members, Dr. Kuna and community members. Mr. Arvin, I'm ready for the next slide. I'm joined today by Dr. Danielle Goolsby. And again, I would like to commend her for her leadership along with a host of people um, we will acknowledge in a little bit. Um, so today we're very, very excited um, to share an update on the local indicators. This is a very, for our community members, this is a very, very important presentation. This is one of the many ways we're held accountable as a school district to report out our progress toward meeting our children's, our students' needs in the district. The dashboard does inform the development of the LCAP. So it's a critical piece of the puzzle as we look at the development of a plan to meet the needs of our students. So the process does begin with the dashboard, with the California dashboard that helps districts identify its areas of strength and its areas of need. Um, we do that all the while anyway, but this is a very transparent public facing dashboard that everyone has access to. Then of course, we review, study, and analyze our local data. This provides additional information to help us make decisions regarding planning to meet the needs of our students. All of this results in a very comprehensive LCAP plan that you all are very familiar with, so I won't take too much time to go over that, but it is indeed the vehicle that allows us to document and measure our progress towards meeting our students' needs. I'm ready, Mr. Arvin, thank you. Oh, I'm ready for the next slide. Thank you so much. Um, and so of course the LCAP, the intention of it is to result in outcomes for our students that evidence their um, enhanced and improved achievement and wellness. There are performance standards that are established by which districts are required to measure um, its progress toward our students' needs. These standards are transparent and they apply to dist all districts. So there's coherence across the state in terms of expectations. The standards are approved and they require the LEA to measure its progress on an annual basis. 
to be public facing. We are to report out to the public, our community, regarding our progress toward these indicators. And they're very, it's important that our community understand the holistic picture of the LEA's progress. And it's incumbent upon us to facilitate presentations like, like this to do just that. I'm ready, Mr. Arvin, thank you. And so you see here, the indicators for 2022 are noted by category um, and the priority is listed next to it. Um, they do not apply to individual schools. We're looking at the LEA here. The data collected um, for this fall is from this school year. So fall 2022 is from fall 21-22. And the deadline to submit results regarding its, um, the local indicators is indeed June 2022. Um, so we are in alignment with the um, due date. And at this time, I would like to transition the presentation to Dr. Goolsby. Dr. Goolsby, please. Thank you. Next slide, please. So um, as you saw in priority one covers all of our, our basic conditions at the school. So that's looking at basic services, school climate, and course access. And all three of those areas, um, we as a district, we have met that requirement. Next slide, please. And um, this, uh, in priority two, you're looking at our, um, our state academic uh, standards and how we have addressed those. There's three areas, um, prof the professional learning, our instructional materials, and the implementation of those policies. Um, and for each one of those areas, you see the um, ratings. Three of those areas, we have brand new uh, adoptions, and so we are in the beginning phases in those um, areas. Next slide, please. Um, this is also a part of um, priority two, where we're looking at um, additional um, subjects such as our CTE and our health and, and PE, visual farming arts and world um, languages. And um, you can see the ratings that are there. Also the engagement of our um, teachers and our administrators in the professional learning. And um, this, these were the ratings from our, our um, survey as well. Next slide, please. So question three, actually the next um, three questions all focus on our parent engagement. Um, the LCAP is heavy on parent engagement um, and wanted to make sure that they're um, involved in the process. So the first question that is asked is about building relationships between the school and the um, and our families, our, staff, our school staff and our families. And as you can see our ratings here, it's all about um, you know, creating community and, and having that a positive relationship between a uh, two-way community with our staffs. Next slide, please. So this is the second question that is asked about building a partnership uh, for student outcomes. So it's not just about having those conversations with our staffs um, and our staff and our families. It's about what we're talking about and we're talking about how our students can be um, successful and what um, we can put into place in, um, in the partnerships between our families and making our, our, our students' um, academic experience successful. And here are the ratings for the question two. Next slide, please. And then the final question is about um, seeking input for decision making. Um, uh, just so everyone knows, we've added some additional parent um, advisory groups that are available for our parents to um, give us advice on um, various plans, not just the LCAP, but also um, any of the uh, state level plans that have come out. And so there was an uptake in um, responses and uh, positive responses to that involvement. And, um, here are the ratings for seeking uh, input for decision making. And next slide. And so that concludes the indicators. So that just gives you an update on where we are in terms of our um, work with the community and the work um, leading up to the LCAP. At this time, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Lucas. Thank you, Dr. Goolsby. I do want to emphasize for our community that this process is not a perfunctory one for us. Um, we take it very, very seriously. There's a lot of reflection, dialogue, conversation, data analysis that goes into this process um, because ultimately it's intended to meet the needs of our students. And there's nothing more serious than that. Um, there's no more serious responsibility than that rather for a school district. So I did wanna assure the community that we do take this process very, very seriously. Um, with that, I wanna transition back to Dr. Goolsby. I believe we're transitioning to City Honors uh, Dependent Charter, their local indicators for the California dashboard. We're ready for the next deck under the same agenda item.
Thank you, Dr. Goolsby. So the first um, four slides are similar to the, or the same actually, as the um, Inglewood Unified School District slides. So if you wanna go ahead to the next slide. So where we talk about the process from the dashboard and how we um, come up with all of our data. Next slide. And um, the importance of um, the indicators and how um, the same with city honors. Now city honors in, um, is its own charter, which means that they have to follow the same process as the district in terms of the LCAP. So they have to meet with their community um, and, um, and share any information about any data with their um, community on an annual basis. Next slide. Um, they're also held to the same um, priorities as, as the, the school district in terms of the LCAP. So the same questions that were asked, they're asked also um, as a school. So this does apply to their school. Okay, so when we talk about, um, just going back to the, the, the district, when we talk about the district, we're talking about all of the schools for the exception of Tijera and City Honors. So with this, with um, City Honors, they have, um, for Priority One, they have met all of those requirements for the basic services, school climate, as well as um, course assets. Next slide, please. The same with as with the the district um, area, we're looking at the, at their school site, how um, the subjects are being implemented, and how professional development is taking place on the campus, and how the programs are being implemented. So here's um, their ratings um, on that, and um, I believe that second one should be a four, not a three, and um, that's their rating. Next slide, please. And the same thing because they have the same. Um, the, the same materials. So when we received our course adoption, they also re received their course adoption too. Um, here are the rating for the progress in the other standards. So we're talking CTE, health, and PE. Um, these are their ratings. And then um, there's a list of ratings of how they um, integrate their uh, professional learning with the, the teachers and the administrators, how that's being implemented on their sites. Next slide, please. So the same with ours, they have um, three questions that they ask our community about how they're building their relationships with their um, the school site and their families. And this was the response and the ratings on how they're building um, that relationship amongst their, um, their school community. Uh, next slide, please. And their question two, this is building partnerships for student outcomes. So this is how they're working together to um, with their families on their student outcomes. Next slide, please. And then the third question is how they're seeking um, decision-making. Again, remember that they have to um, work with their school site community to get feedback on all of their plans. As city honors, they have, um, they not just work on the LCAP, also they're, um, their WASP, their um, single plan for student achievement, all of those have to be in alignment and they all require uh, parent and community feedback um, in order to develop their plans. Next slide. And that is it, back to Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, Dr. Goolsby. I, I would like to emphasize, I, I'm sure everyone noticed in the bottom right corner, um, as Dr. Goolsby pointed out, what the ratings mean. And it's critically important to note that as with any data set, the story behind those numbers is what we're most interested in. The numbers give us kind of the mosaic and then we, we color it in with the story behind the numbers. So I do wanna emphasize that to the community. So if you see a two or three, a four, a five, there's evidence behind that number. There's a story behind those numbers um, that we investigate and analyze. In that story lies um, the solutions to whatever challenges might present themselves so that again, we continue to meet and further meet the needs of our students. So I wanted to share that piece of the process. I'm very honored to introduce um, Mr. Brent Tilley, Principal of La Tijera Academy of Excellence. He will review his dependent charters local indicators. Mr. Tilly, please. And Mr. Arvin, we're ready, ready for La Tijera's deck. Thank you, Dr. Lucas and Dr. Goolsby for your support and leadership as we compile this information. I also want to send a special shout out to Ms. Lourdes Hale for her help as well. Um, as mentioned by both Dr. Goolsby and Dr. Lucas, this is uh, information collated from our, our school community and uh, the numbers do tell a tale. I won't go into that, but I 
happy to present it to you. Next slide. Again, this, this slide speaks to the development of the LCAP. I think we've talked about that a little bit. The dashboard is probably the easiest and most efficient way to get a snapshot as, as to the school's health when it comes to some of the issues that are presented in the survey. Uh, and we use that information to inform the writing of the LCAP. Next slide, please. Performance standards, again, these are standards that come from the state uh, to make sure they're consistent, not just in Inglewood or Elotte here, but uh, district-wide and statewide. Uh, it's about measuring progress. If you look at the standards, they follow more of a growth mindset. Uh, they're not punitive, but they're designed to give us some feedback to see our growth and progress and uh, meeting our goals for all of our students. Next slide, please. Again, this slide's been uh, gone over by Dr. Goolsby and Dr. Lucas goes over what our focus has been as a district and of course as a uh, school at La Tierra. And La Tierra is a dependent charter, which is why we have our own LCAP. Next slide, please. Okay, again, Dr. Gould, we kind of went over this already, but again, just for the record, our basic service is priority one. That speaks to HR, uh, teacher assignments, among other things, making sure we have materials. Uh, school climate survey, again, that's, for our students to make sure they feel that they have positive relationships on the site. And last but not least, our students have access to a appropriately rigorous curriculum. We met all of those uh, priorities as did the district. Next slide, please. This speaks uh, really three different questions here. It speaks more to curriculum and capacity building with our staff uh, by English, ELD, math, science, and history. Uh, one being exploration research phase, as you can see in the legend at the bottom, four being full implementation, and five, implementation of sustainability. You can kind of see those things for themselves. Of note, I which mentioned um, the history of social science. We did receive a recent textbook adoption. So when it comes to materials alignment, not too clear about that. So I need to go back and investigate that on my end. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide here has two questions. One, implementation of the standards and our progress when it comes to curriculum. Again, making sure all of our students have the appropriately rigorous uh, standards-based curriculum that's aligned with the CCSS. And also to your right, uh, this is one for capacity building with the teachers. And again, you can see where we rank when it comes to CTE, health, PE, uh, VAPA, or visual performing arts and languages. And again, on to the right, it speaks to our teachers feeling that they're being developed, they're growing in the profession. I'm happy to see that we have a couple fours there, and that's something we focused on this year. Thank you. Next slide, please. The next three slides speak more to parent engagement, and this is a feedback we received from our families. Uh, one caveat, and I want to thank Dr. Goolsby here. Uh, Latier was kind of in a lurch uh, during COVID and post-COVID when it came to community liaison, and she made that a priority at our school and other schools, and we were able to onboard a new liaison in the spring, and she's doing a really, really good job. Not sure if that's reflected in the data, but just wanted to give her a shout out as well as our liaison. Building relationships between school staff and families, you can see the results from the individual questions there. Next slide, please. Building partnerships for student outcomes. And again, there's four separate questions that relate to that overall topic, and they all ranked at two or beginning development. And last but not least, seeking input for decision making. So again, how do we go about uh, running the school? And so of note, uh, at La Tierra, we do have school site council, we have ELAC meetings, which have really started robustly in the spring, it's kind of coalesced with our community liaison coming. I do also have a call with the principal monthly, I communicate via phone call and email once a week with our family. So I'm looking forward to seeing some growth in this area in the upcoming year, but appreciate the feedback nonetheless. Next slide. Okay. And that's all that I have. So again, thank you, Dr. Lucas and Dr. Goolsby for your support.
And Mr. Tilly, thank you for your leadership. And as we close, um, I do want to commend and acknowledge the leadership of Dr. Goolsby, Ms. Lord of this Hell, our principals, Dr. Saba Raya, who could not be with us today, but who is of course is of course the principal of City Honors, Mr. Brent Tilly, all of the parents, teachers, support staff at all of our schools and in the district who've helped us um, complete this self-reflection. I do want to close with um, how I started. Um, this process is critical to not only the LCAP, but to how we think about the work we do in the district. And it's incumbent upon us to really look at this data and make a difference. You saw some very pronounced areas of strength and some areas of need that we continue to plan around. Our LCAP reflects that, as does the strategic plan. And we do indeed take all of this data very, very seriously and expect progress in the areas um, in which we do need progress. With that, I'd like to turn it back to Dr. Kuna. Thank you for your time and attention, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lucas, and uh, thank you, Mr. Tilly and uh, Dr. Goolsby. Please uh, uh, apologize to your family for us for pulling you away from your vacation, uh, one that is well deserved. Uh, our apologies for that. Um, board members, any questions or comments regarding the uh, dashboard indicators? I was looking at numbers, and in the beginning, I was wondering who answered these questions or whatever, but this was meetings that you had with parents, I suppose, in your community. And I saw a lot of them were in the beginning stages. So is this just for this year? Does it go back a couple of years? How this is, tell me where these numbers are coming from. How'd you come up with these numbers, especially those in the beginning stages? I saw some ones and some twos. Yeah. Then I saw some fours on La Tijera's. So am I not calculating this? Do the numbers not mean certain things? That wasn't clear to me. Sure, Dr. Goolsby, would you please? Sure, so the um, numbers mean, uh, the how the surveys go, it's, it's, it's given to the, our, our parent leadership, our, um, the parent, the school community. So, so a lot to hear would be their school community at, mm -hmm. at, at, at um, City Honors would be theirs for the district is our um, our uh, parent community. And they look at from look at it from their perspective. They don't, they're not necessarily privy to all the things that we know, but it's based from their perspective. Do they feel as though that these things are up and running? And in the areas um, where we needed some strength is on our newest adoptions. So um, like if you look on our, the, for the the uh, the subjects, where it's like ELD, history and social studies, all three of those areas are areas where we have brand new adoptions. And so getting them up and running and going and, and teachers are working with the Fidelity and the families are used to it, it's not there yet. But they acknowledge that it, they see that A, we got a new mm -hmm. adoption and B, that is, is upcoming. Whereas on the flip side, you saw with math and language arts, those, those were a four um, because they're well-established um, programs that the families are aware of, they know about, they've seen the homework, they see the work, so they're able to speak to those programs. So that's um, kind of when we were having our discussion with, because we have a discussion with our, um, especially with our parent leadership about the, the um, indicators and they share with us why they um, have made the comments that they've made and why they made it. And that was one of the feedbacks that we got for that particular one. So it's pretty much like, do they see it? They're involved on their campuses. Do they see these things happening when their kids are coming home with their, their work? Are they seeing um, these things? And so it's based off of what they are witnessing and what they're experiencing um, with our district. Dr. Gulzi, mm -hmm. may I add a little bit to that really thorough response? Um, I do want to emphasize also that we have instructional priorities in the district. You, as it, any organization needs to choose specific foci. And I think we'll see a correlation between the areas we got some of our strongest scores in and in terms of what aligns to our instructional priorities. So um, any leader of any organization knows that if you see data about your organization that surprises you, it means that you don't have your pulse on the organization. So the data did not surprise us. So for example, we knew to Dr. Goolsby, Goolsby's point, um, because of these new adoptions and what that means to change management and all of that, um, for next year, we're embedding our instructional priorities, Ms. Evans, for example, literacy in all content areas. So we focused heavily on English language arts. So next year, our secondary content teachers will also um, have 
quite in-depth professional development in literacy and the content area. So that should move those areas in addition to us continuing our rollout of the adoptions in these respective subject areas. So that's what you meant by the, everyone has a, a backstory. I understand what you're talking about now. Yes, thank you very much. Thank Thorough you. explanation, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lucas and team. Uh, next, we will move to uh, item 6B, which is uh, the annual report on uh, Measure GG Bond uh, from our uh, presented by Mr. Dexter Hall of the Citizens Bond Oversight uh, Committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hall, for being with us this evening. Good evening, Dr. Kuna, board members, community, and congrats to all the teachers who are retiring. Thank you for your service. My name is Dexter Hall. I am the chair of the Inglewood Unified School District's Measure GG and I Citizens Bond Oversight Committee uh, in parentheses CBOC. Tonight, I am pleased to present to the County Administrator, Board of Education and Inglewood Community on behalf of the CBOC, the annual report for the 2021-2022 fiscal year expenditure and progress report. The report is attached to the board agenda and posted on the CBOC website. The CBOC has seen progress and wishes to thank the County Administrator, Board of Education, and Los Angeles County of Education for its continued support of the CBOC and oversight of the bonds. The CBOC hopes that the bond projects continue to progress and are completed expeditiously and within budget. The CBOC will continue to report on the progress of the bond programs and hopes that the bond programs will continue to bring pride to the district and the community. For more information on the committee's activities and regular updates on bond projects, you can access the following link at inglewoodusd.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, board members, any questions or comments for Mr. Hall? All right, hearing none, thank you, Mr. I Hall. Have a great evening. Mr. Hall, when, when, when is the next uh, CBOC meeting? Um, I believe that's uh, September 21st. Is that right, Mr. Guzman? Without looking at the... Um, hi, Ms. Uh, yes, let me uh, look it up real quick. I want to make sure I give you the right date. Sure. Yeah, because I know um, it's in September. Uh, sure, so... And could you let the community know how they can access that meeting as well, Mr. Hall? Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, and that's what uh, we're active. I've been working here because you don't work here. At the, uh, yes. Okay. So the next meeting is on September 21st. And wow. we actually have a dedicated website for the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee in our district website. So the, probably the easiest way to get to it is to go to Google, type in Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, Inglewood Unified. It'll be the first thing that pops up. Uh, and you click on that and you should be able then to look at the agenda and you should also be able to see the live stream of the committee meeting. And at that point in time, you can also, it's also open for public comments and anything of that nature. So again, the next meeting, um, I, I mentioned that. And um, as, I, as I mentioned, you can go to the district website, it's right on there next. And the next meeting um, as well will be available uh, for anyone to access. And Mr. Myers, also I've been working with the Inglewood Chamber of Commerce and also too with I and Inglewood. I know I and Inglewood starting to post it. Uh, Mr. Lehman Ginger, who runs I and Inglewood, is starting to post the uh, information and the link on her Instagram page and also Facebook page as well. And then on our chamber media sites as well too. Great, sounds great, thank you. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Hall. Have a great evening. Okay, next up we have uh, item 6C, which is the, uh, we're gonna have Dr. Lucas again, who will be providing an update regarding the 2022-23 Local Control and Accountability Plan, the LCAP for uh, Inglewood Unified School District. Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, Dr. Kuna. I have the distinct privilege of introducing my colleague, my cabinet colleague, Mr. Rafael Guzman, Chief Business uh, Officer, and one of my teammates, Dr. Danielle Goolsby, again, Executive Director of State and Federal Programs, they will be facilitating the presentation. Thank you. Mr. Guzman, I think you're first up. Uh, thank you, uh, 
Dr. Lucas for that introduction. Um, and uh, thank you all for uh, uh, joining us today for this board meeting. Thank you to our board members and of course, uh, Dr. Kuna uh, for the opportunity for uh, to present today uh, regarding uh, the LCAP. So in today's agenda, um, we have some information regarding the LCAP budget overview for parents uh, in regards to city honors uh, for the district and for La Tijera. And we also have some quick updates for the LCAP. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see here, we have this budget overview for parents. So this document was created just to uh, increase the level of transparency uh, and kind of you know, uh, show our numbers to our community and to parents that they're able to see what's going on with the budget. And as you can see in this slide here, uh, it's showing a revenue source uh, of for the district, and it shows you kind of, you know how much is in LCFF revenues, how much is in other state revenues, in federal revenues, and local funds as well. When we talk about LCFF, uh, just for clarification, that's the local control funding formula. As you can see here, it's the biggest piece of the pie. It's that that one in light blue there that you can see on the screen, ninety two point nine million. And um, in that, of those LCFF dollars, uh, you have supplemental and concentration grant funds, which, which equate to about 25.7 million there. So, um, and the rest of the funds, the 67.2 million is your base grant. Um, next slide, please. So as you can see here in the budget, the budget expenditures in the LCAP, uh, this chart provides a hook summary of how much Inglewood Unified School District plans to spend for 22, 23. And you can see there the total budget of general fund expenses, about 163 million. And of those, 112 million are included in the LCAP. Um, so we just wanted to show that slide there as well. Next slide, please. And um, as we look at prior year expenses for increased or improved services for higher needs, uh, uh, for high needs students, we look at this chart. And this, what this chart does is it compares uh, what the district budget last year in the LCAP for actions and services that actually contribute to increasing or improved services for high needs students. Um, so as you can see, the total budgeted expenditures for high needs students in the LCAP, 20, about 20, $23 million, and the actual expenditures for high needs students in the LCAP was about 17.3, which, uh, you know, uh, basically from what we estimated uh, last year. Next slide, please. And um, now moving on to the budget overview for parents for city honors. Now, the reason why we have a separate one for city honors um, is because as you know, city honors has a separate LCAP and so does uh, La Tijera because they are dependent charters. Uh, so that's why we have to present it differently. And so again, uh, we have the projected revenue sources here. And again, the biggest source of revenue for the charter for city honors uh, is essentially the LCFF funds or the local control funding formula funds. And as you can see there, the projected revenues uh, are, are listed on the pie chart there. And it's the biggest piece of, of the pie for uh, city honors. And it's broken down into about $3 million of base funding and then uh, about 800,000 in uh, supplemental and concentration funds. Um, next slide, please. So uh, in regards to the expenses, uh, uh, there are 4 million, about $4.04 .04 million uh, of budgeted expenditures in the LCAP. Uh, the total of the entire budget though is about 4.3. So of the 4.3, $4 million are budgeted in the LCAP. Next slide, please. And in regards to the increased or improved services, um, as you can see here, the total budgeted expenditures for high needs students in the LCAP uh, was 758,000 and the actual expenditures exceeded that a little bit to by 765,800 is the expense there. Um, next slide, please. Now moving on to the budget overview for parents for La Tijera, uh, which is our, one of our other uh, charters there. And as you can see, the total LCFF funds there are about 8.1 million. Um, and, the re and that's the biggest piece of the pie of revenues for uh, La Tijera. And essentially of those $8 million, 6.2 are part of your base grant and about 1.8 is your supplemental and concentration grant funds. Um, next slide, please. Now, as you can see here, uh, you know, there are about $9.3 million in budgeted expenditures for La Tijera. Of those $9.3 million, 6.8 is budgeted in the LCAP. Next slide, please. And in regards to the prior year expenses, uh, the total budgeted expenditures were about 1.3 million and the actual expenses pretty much matched that just a little bit over 
uh, in regards to what happened there at La Tijera. Next slide, please. And um, moving on to uh, next steps. And here, since the public hearing, uh, uh, the following changes have been made as recommended by LACO. So I'll hand this over to uh, Dr. Goolsby, who will go over some of those changes. Thank you. All right. So um, in, uh, after our public hearing, our responsibility is to go back and look at any um, suggestions or comments that were made by the public um, and or LACO um, during that uh, time period. So there were some updates to our metric tables those update to um, a couple of the action tables, and then as well as an update to the budget overview for parents. So what this means is that the next step is that after the approval of this plan, the LCAP will be sent to LACO for final approval um, at the county level. And then once um, LACO has made their approval, then it will go to the um, state for, its, for the final approval. Um, next slide. Um, some special thanks. I want to give special thanks to um, Jeanette Gomez and um, Renee Wildermuth. They worked very hard on making sure that all of our numbers um, were together and that all the action items tied to our budget. They worked with um, LACO to, um, for any consultation um, to make sure that everything was um, prepared for today. And they worked really, really hard. So I really want to give them um, a shout out for all their hard work. Um, next and slide. Oh, go ahead. And Dr. Goolsby, I also would like to thank Miss um, uh, Adrian Bakasar from LACO, Absolutely. who was really, really, really helpful to us. I mean, it's that type of we, we love that type of support that, that we're receiving. And and of course, also Mr. Uh, Dio Brack from he's our business services consultant that helps us as well. So a real big shout out to them for their support and, and helping us through this as well. Absolutely. And of course, to Dr. Goolsby herself because she's been amazing. I just can't stress enough how great she has been. She's taken this on and done an amazing job. And, you know, it's not easy work. I mean, she she has had to track people down and get numbers and, and get data. And she's she's done amazing work. And so Dr. Goolsby, uh, thank you so much for, for, for taking care of this and for working so greatly and collaboratively with, with business services as well. We really enjoy working with you, both Jeanette and myself. We really appreciate working with you and your team. Thank you. May I share something, Mr. Guzman and Dr. Goolsby? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat. Back to you. <laughs> thank you. I'm not going to repeat what Mr. Guzman um, shared. Uh, Dr. Goolsby's leadership is extraordinary, and I'm so glad that it came from him. So thank you for that, Mr. Guzman. In turn, I would like to thank you for your leadership with this process. Um, this would not work without a focused and intentional effort between the two divisions, as well as HR. So thank you, Dr. Stephanie, as well, and your team, and in all of cabinet, Dr. Kuna and Dr. Torres in her um, absence. So kudos to everyone. This was absolutely a team effort. Dr. Kuna, back to you. Thank you. And, and I just, you know, I want to share that, uh, you know, the, the comments that we received from LACO, uh, with regards to the work that uh, Dr. Goolsby and her team have done with with the LCAP, um, it, it is it's really impressive. Um, you know, they they do talk about just how well thought out the LCAP is um, and the attention to detail. Um, so I, I, you know, it is a monumental task, and I and I don't know if if anybody can appreciate it who hasn't done it. Um, but I, I just, you know, want to, again, reiterate what everybody shared about uh, Dr. Goolsby and, and the rest of uh, the team who have contributed to the LCAP. Um, I, I just appreciate the effort that goes into it. Um, board members, any uh, questions or comments on, on your end? Yes, just a, just a comment. Uh, it looks like a lot of work. And like you said, it's a team effort to get all of this done. Um, one little thing I was looking at for some of, some of the LCAP expenses exceeded what was budgeted. Is that anything that we should be concerned about? Is that why we have you know extra money to back up certain things? Uh, it yeah. was slides where I saw that the expenses were a little bit more than expected. So yes, Ms. Evans, sometimes what happens is 
we budgeted an amount at the beginning of the year, but then the budget gets revised. And so then the amount goes up. Uh, we, we carefully monitor those expenses and they weren't very much higher than what we budgeted. Um, so they're in line and we've been able, and then what, what happens as well is that some of that is absorbed in the base funding as well. So it didn't really uh, have a, any sort of, didn't really have a detrimental impact to our ending fund balance. And again, just to mention, these are estimated. So um, as you know, there's an unaudited actuals period that happens. Um, so in September, uh, you'll actually have the final numbers. Okay, thank you again, team. Uh, we will transition now to uh, item 6D, which is uh, the adopted uh, budget presentation. And I believe we have uh, um, Dr. Uh, Williams and Mr. Guzman presenting for this one, right? Uh, yes, Dr. Kuna, thank you so much. And again, thank you to our wonderful board, um, our community and Dr. Kuna uh, for allowing us to present today. Uh, we're going to be uh, presenting regarding our adopted budget and cash flow. Uh, next slide, please. So just to uh, go over these key terms, once again, um, if you looked at the budget, this is going to pop up a lot. And so we want to make sure we review these. Uh, so ADA, again, is, is looking at the uh, actual students that are attending classes. So you, your enrollment could be, you know, 7,000 students, but if none of them show up to school, uh, then you don't get funding for that day. Um, so ADA is extremely important uh, because we are funded based off of our ADA. Um, so that's why you'll hear that often. Uh, uh, you know. And then the next item here is cash flow report. So you'll see a little bit of that today in today's presentation. We're just making sure that we're able to meet our cash flow obligations throughout the year. Um, again, as I, as I said before, as far as a scenario of what this looks like, it's like our own budgets, right? If, if you have bills that are due on the first, you have to make sure you have money in the bank on the first, right? So, you, so in essence, your cash flow is you're monitoring the budget that way as well. So if you don't get paid until the 10th, but your bills are due on the first, you got to make sure you somehow have a reserve, right, to be able to get you through until the 10th. And, and that's how it happens with, with the school district budget with a lot more funds and a lot of different movements, right? But um, that's, we wanna carefully monitor cash so that we're able to ensure that we meet our cash obligations. Um, COLA is another thing that's really important to know. And that's basically the, it's the cost of living adjustment or the increase in funding. And specifically, we usually refer to it uh, tied to LCFF, which is a local control funding formula, which is next there. And that's the biggest portion of our funding. It's the largest source of revenue. If you remember in the previous presentation, it had the biggest piece of the pie. That's where we get the majority of our funds, uh, the local control funding formula. Um, so, and then finally, multi-year financial projections. These are financial projections for the current and two subsequent years. And in order to file a positive certification, uh, which happens in interim reports, you file a certification. Um, in order to file a positive certification, the district will need to show and demonstrate that it meets its financial obligations for the current and two subsequent fiscal years. Um, next slide. And at this time, I'd like to transition to uh, Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams. Good evening, Dr. Kuna, board members, staff, and community. Uh, I'm pleased to co-present this afternoon with Mr. Guzman, uh, and I will be going over a few of the slides. So our agenda for tonight, uh, first, we're going to be looking at the budget and the financial reporting cycle, um, legal requirements, public hearing feedback. 45-day budget revision, major assumptions, multi-year fiscal projections and reserves, our reserve for economic uncertainty disclosure, fiscal stability plan for 22-23 through 24-25 school years, cash flow, and next step. Uh, next slide, please. So as you know, the budget is a living document and we go through this um, financial reporting cycle. Currently we are here in June where we are uh, presenting to you the adopted LCAP and budget for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, our next work will begin in July when we begin to work on our year in closing for the fiscal year 21-22. And then looking ahead to September, what we'll be bringing back to the board are unaudited actuals for 21-22. And as you can see, it, go, it continues on. Next slide, please. So 
so the legal requirement, the ed- Education Code 42127 provides, on or before July 1st of each year, the governing board of each school district shall hold a public hearing conducted in, in accordance with the Education Code on the budget to be adopted for the subsequent fiscal year. The district met this requirement on June 22nd, 2022. The budget to be adopted shall be prepared in accordance with Education Code 42126. Next slide, please. Public hearing feedback. The district held a public hearing regarding the budget on June 22nd, 2022. Public comments were heard during the hearing. The district has satisfied the legal requirement for public hearing in accordance with Education Code 42103. Next slide, please. Forty-five day budget revision. The 22-23 California State Budget Act was not signed prior to the creation of the district adopted budget. The district will need to incorporate any significant changes related to the final approved budget act within the 45 day budget revision. The district will bring any revisions to the August 10th, 2022 board meeting. Mr. Guzman, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, and so just, we're going to go through these uh, quickly because we, we went through these in our last meeting, but we wanted to make sure, just in case you missed it for whatever reason, uh, we wanted to make sure we just review the major assumptions. Again, you can see that our declining enrollment is, is uh, being assumed for here in our assumptions. Uh, we're assuming that enrollment will drop to 7,270 next fiscal year, and then 6,965 in 23-24 and then to 6,712 in 24-25. So we're showing that decline in enrollment there. Um, next slide, please. And as we look at some other major assumptions, what we did for LCFF, it's affected by the COLA, which are those terms we were talking about earlier. And uh, really you're looking at in 22-23, a 6.56% COLA that was estimated when the budget was, uh, when we actually got this budget together. Um, now the 45 day budget revision, we will probably have some changes to this um, from what we are hearing, uh, but that has not been exactly finalized yet. So we'll we'll fill those in at the 45 day budget revision. Next slide, please. And um, here are some other major assumptions where we like show, for instance, what we are estimating for lottery, for lottery for instructional materials, the mandated block grant increases, uh, SIRS and purse rates, our local step and column. For those of you that don't know what step and column is, it's basically the natural raise that a person gets. So if we get a brand new person that gets hired at step one, they move up to step two or step three. And so we're estimating that that's about a natural 2% increase. Uh, or And then for the classified staff, about 1.27%. And uh, we're also projecting uh, some higher health and welfare rate changes there in the out years um, as well. Next slide, please. So as we look at the budget summary, you can see here that our total revenues um, are about 174 million next year and the total expenses about 178 for a uh, net decrease of 4.3 million, which leaves our ending fund balance at about 55.1 million. Um, Next slide, please. So uh, this year is the MYP and reserves. So if we look at the three years uh, and you can see the details behind the MYP in the attachment that's attached to uh, the adoption today of the board, it has the details, um, but essentially your revenues and expenses over, over the next three years, you can see that uh, 22, 23, um, deficit spending about 4.3 million, ending fund balance of 55.1, 23, 24, deficit spending slightly, um, and then 54.8 ending fund balance, and 24, 25, about 6.8 million in deficit spending, uh, reducing our balance to 48 million. But the good thing is that across all three years, the district does meet its reserve for economic uncertainties and the district has committed funds now uh, because of the changes in, in law, the district must commit funds that are above 10%. So uh, the district does have those commitments in all three years. Um, next slide, please. 
So one of the things I'd, I'd like for all of us to focus on is the unrestricted side, because that is probably not that the restricted side isn't important. It's very important as well, because it could affect the unrestricted as far as contributions go. Uh, but the unrestricted side is really important to look at. And as you can see, deficit spending about 6.3 million in 2223. 23, 24, about 500,000, and 24, 25, about 7.2 million. Now, it's important to note that in 22, 23, the reason why you're seeing 6.3 million in deficit spending is because we are accounting for about $5.7 million of expenses uh, for the Silver Medal and Concentration Grant carryover. So essentially, that fell to the reserve. And so now we have to expend it this year. That's a new law that has come into effect for for this fiscal year that you have to spend your LCFF carryover. It doesn't have to be spent this year, but we have to budget as though it will. And that's how we that's how we budgeted it. And essentially that's why you're seeing a, a larger deficit spending. But what you do see is into that third out year, there is a problem, there's deficit spending. And the district needs to address those issues now so that it's not such a big hit when you have to do it two years from now. So it's really important that the district looks at this um, and again, this is an MYP, it's a projection. Um, so these numbers can change drastically from one day to the next. If the economy you know, uh, you know, enters into a recession and, and colas go down, these numbers might get worse or they might get better. But at the end of the day, currently, this, this is what we're looking at and it's a good planning tool for the district to start addressing the deficit spending problem now uh, to ensure that it is fiscally solvent uh, in the future. But currently, as it stands, we do meet our reserve for economic uncertainties across all three years. Next slide, please. So um, this is something else that we also have to include, which is the reserve for economic uncertainty disclosure. It's just a disclosure of why um, uh, we have, for instance, assigned funds, uh, which we do have in all three years. And, and the, exam the uh, reasoning that we gave there is that the district is currently in a path to fiscal recovery but it still needs to make adjustments to ensure fiscal solvency. Failure to make those adjustments uh, to curb deficit spending may result in fiscal insolvency. So we need to make sure that the reserves are carefully monitored and that we uh, uh, have some assigned amounts to protect the district from volatility or unbudgeted increases in PERS, uh, STIRS, which is the retirement plans, uh, workers' compensation, and other benefits, as well as other unexpected or unbudgeted general fund expenditures. So um, another thing to keep in mind, though, with these reserves is they are one time in nature, they are reserves. So once you spend them, they're gone. And so if you have a deficit if you, a spending problem, that becomes an issue when you deplete your reserves. Next slide, please. A fiscal stabilization plan, as you can see here, the, this is the outline of what the plan has so thus far for 22-23 through 24-25. There's uh, obviously still deficit spending in the out year. So the district will need to uh, look at this plan very carefully and at, uh, whether perhaps maybe at the 45 day revision, bring an update, but for sure at the first interim report, the district will need to bring a revised fiscal stabilization plan based on the changes and factors that we hear from the state. So as the state clarifies the uh, state adopted budget and um, as they give their trailer bill language about how it's going to be implemented, some adjustments will most likely need to be made to the 45-day revision, as well as our, F our fiscal stabilization plan. Um, next slide, please. And here we have our cash flow. I know this is a lot of numbers, but I, if you can focus on the very last line, and as you can see here, um, the last line, uh, if you look, there's about $49 million. That's what we're projecting to end our cash balance, what, meaning that's what, we actually, what the district actually has over at the LA County Treasurer. Um, and so we ended the month of May at about 70.2 million. And in June, we're expecting to, and, and the rest of the year to make, you know, final payments and things like that for the services. And, and so essentially uh, it would end at about 49 million. Um, next slide, please. And as we look at uh, the adopted budget, you can see that across each month, we're projecting that we will be okay as far as cash goes. So the district will have uh, the funds to meet its, um, uh, obligations in, in those years as far as cash uh, monitoring. So, but, you know, we have to continue to verify these numbers at each interim report to verify that we are still in solid ground when it comes to cash. Um, next slide, please. And then now you can see the cash flow for year two, which is the 23-24 fiscal year, uh, which we have to provide as well. And essentially you can see there that we still are able to meet our cash obligations every month. But again, this, we have to carefully monitor this um, 
so that we don't fall into a situation where you run out of cash. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and now I will turn it back to Dr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. Next step, approval of the adopted budget on June 29, 2022, which is tonight. Uh, we want to make sure that the board and our community uh, expect major revisions at the 45-day budget revision due to the many assumption changes that are being discussed at the state level. Update the fiscal stabilization plan, as Mr. Guzman talked about. The district must continuously monitor and update this plan to ensure the district's long-term fiscal solvency. That is crucial. Carefully monitoring ESSER expenses and ensure that, that those funds are spent by the established timeline. It is important to begin to now move our focus to year-end closing and carefully monitoring changes in our enrollment. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Guzman. Okay. Next slide, please. Well, thank you all so much. Um, and that is about it. Uh, Dr. Kuna, we turn it back to you. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Williams and uh, Mr. Guzman. And uh, Mr. Guzman, I, I know this is your final report with us, um, but I just want to say that I am sure I speak for everyone uh, when I appreciate or tell you how much we appreciate um, your detail um, in both explanation and in reports that you give to us. Um, you make everything that is very complicated seem very easy. So thank you so much for that. Uh, board members, any questions or comments on your end? Yes, I finally figured out how to make my voice unmuted. I was pushing it with my finger and I could have done it with the arrow, didn't realize that after all this time. Anyway, that's why I didn't make a comment on the last one. But uh, Mr. Guzman, thank you so much for all that you've done. You you really make your reports so that I can understand them and that's really saying something. So I don't have to question a lot of things, but for the people listening, you heard Dr. Uh, Mr. Guzman talk about how important it is for our enrollment to get students in our school and for them to show up every day. It's not just that they're enrolled, they have to come to school. So we're looking at enrollment dropping over the next couple of years. We need to get out there and beat the bushes and get everybody in Inglewood. We have so much going on in Inglewood and we have so many dedicated people who do this work to make our students and our schools successful. We just need to get the word out there so that people know what we're doing so that we can get this enrollment up. And with enrollment comes money. And since we are talking about money tonight, that's what we need. We need those students in our schools so that we can get money in the bank and we can have money to do what we need to do to make sure that our students are successful. Thank you, Mr. Guzman, for all you've done and for, for your team, for everything that you've done to make this seem so simple. And I know it's not working with all the figures that you have to, you and your team. And welcome, uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, you got a, you got some big shoes to fill here. So I'm just letting you know. Thank you so much, Mr. Guzman. Thank you, Ms. Evans. I had a question. Um, when you talk about the 45-day revision, are we looking at uh, Governor Newsom's um, when he passes that bill and what some of the revenue will be for our school district? Those are some of the figures that will go into that 45-day budget revision? Absolutely, Dr. McGee. Um, that is, so there were quite a bit of different proposals uh, at the time of the adopted budget, when we created the adopted budget. And we went with the ones that LACO recommended, which was basically, um, you know, some of the ones that the governor recommended in the May revision. But there was still some uncertainty about other provisions. So as you just mentioned, um, once the governor signs that uh, budget and we know exactly what the what he means by certain things, which is which comes through trailer bill language sometimes, you know, um, because sometimes they'll say something and then we need more details to know what exactly that means. That is what will be uh, included in the 45 day revisions. And we do we, we are hearing that there are some 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 changes coming coming our way for that. Well, he told me he's going to give Inglewood a lot of money. So if he doesn't, you know what's happening in November. I'm not <laughs> playing with him. And on that note, 
I am going to miss not being able to um, call you out for not spelling it out. That's about it. And um, I wish you well. I wish you really enjoyed leaving us since you must do that. And welcome, Dr. Williams. And um, you just make sure you check on us every now and then. Thank and, you. Um, you know, take care of your beautiful family and enjoy your summer if you have any time off before your transition. Thank you, Dr. Mickey. Okay, Dr. Plummer. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Uh, okay, moving on to uh, our next item is uh, public comment. Public comment on agendized and non-agendized items. The County Administrator and Board of Education welcome input from the public. Speakers wishing to address the County Administrator and the Board on agenda and non-agenda topics must complete the public comment submission form prior to the County Administrator commencing the public comment period under agenda item seven. Written comments submitted to the County Administrator and Board will no longer be read aloud by staff during the board uh, public comment period. Instead, written comments will be provided to the county administrator and to the Board of Education for their consideration. The submission form is available on the district's website at www.inglewoodusd.com. Three minutes will be allotted to each speaker and a maximum of 30 minutes for public comment on agenda items and a maximum of 30 minutes for public comment on non-agenda items will be allotted during the public comment period. If the public comment cards exceed 10 cards per section, the county administrator may reduce the time allowed from three minutes to either two or one minute per person to hear from more speakers. The guideline for public comment will be in accordance with board bylaws, uh, board bylaw 9323. Ms. Zambrano, do we have any public comments on agenda or non-agenda items? Yes, we do, Dr. Kuna. Tonight we have one public comment on agenda item. Um, Ms. The first public comment is from Ms. Laverne. Andrews, Ms. Andrews, can you please raise your hands so our IT department could designate you as a speaker? Can you please unmute yourself, Ms. Laverne? Can you hear us? Ms. LeBurn, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear yes. us now? Okay, yes, I can. you may begin with your um, public comment for agenda items. You have three okay. minutes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kuna, IUSD and community members. On May 25th, um, I saw a need to provide an alternative to, to the closing of Warren Lane School. And I submitted to Dr. Torres and three of the board members a proposal to save Warren Lane and to increase enrollment. I was pleased to see at the last board meeting on the 22nd, the resolution for 55-21-22, establishing a, an asset management advisory committee where parents, community, and business components will come together and discuss the process and the future of school properties. Please take a moment before closing this meeting to inform us how we can become involved in this decision-making forum. In this way, it will ensure that all parties have the opportunity to engage into a proactive dialogue with each other. Uh, again, that was resolution 5521-22 on May 22nd, oh, excuse me, on June 22nd. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Laburn. You may now um, lower your hand. Dr. Kuna, that concludes our public comments for agenda items. We're now going to transition to public comments for non-agenda items. Our first public comment is from Mr. John Hughes. Mr. Hughes, can you please raise your hands? Our IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Hughes, can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can okay, you hear me? Thank you. Yes, you may begin with your public comment. Um, yes, I would like to uh, thank uh, the board and I would really like to thank uh, Dr. Kuna for coming out and addressing uh, the community. Um, we had a 
productive uh, exchange and uh, of ideas and different perspectives. Some things we agreed upon, some things we didn't, but we all agree that the best interest is for uh, a total comprehensive approach uh, to education, to the education of our children. And we would like to um, extend uh, some of the ideas that have come from this committee engaging in the process moving forward. Some of the things that are being suggested are already or have already taken place. And if permitted, we would like to present a presentation on the next board and be placed on the next board agenda. Uh, that would include uh, PCAT, who uh, had a, uh, a um, parent center on the campus. Um, previously that should have still been open as well as our organizations of Inglewood Rising and We Are Free. Um, we don't anticipate it lasting more than approximately 10 minutes, if, if that, um, and we are prepared to put together slides and show a comprehensive um, approach from the community, from community leaders on our best path forward. So we are prepared to do that and we would like to engage in that process. And we have some great ideas for keeping uh, Warren Lane afloat and productive during this time of, uh, of decision-making. And we're looking forward uh, to productive conversations that are respectful going both ways. Thank you. You tell Mike to talk. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. You may now awesome. lower. Yes. Yeah, I just have to say, um, Mr. Powell is having a problem, but if you need him to talk, he can talk through mine as well if he comes up. Okay, just um, okay. stay logged in and we'll we'll unmute you once it's um, okay. his turn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Hughes. You may now lower your hand. Our okay. second public comment is from Ms. Laverne Andrews. Ms. Andrews, can you please um, raise your hand so our IT department could designate you as a speaker? Ms. Um, Laverne, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, okay, give us a minute so we can restart the timer. Thank you very much. Oh, you may begin with your public comment. Okay. So I'd like to speak about the about um, the upkeep of the school, Warren Lane. In a matter of a few weeks, the grass has grown high, and the base of those large trees have grown and spread along the ground. A few years ago, during the school year, we had a custodian, a school custodian, um, confronted by a homeless man hiding on the school yard. In a time of hom homelessness now, uh, the school does not need to appear unoccupied so that we don't have vagrantness and destruction of the school property. So I'm, I'm asking what safeguards are going to be put in place to keep the appearance of the school up and to maintain it and have safety on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Laverne. You may now lower your hand. And our third public comment is from Mr. Taj Powell. I believe he's gonna be logging in with uh, Mr. Hughes' login. Mr. Taj Powell, can you please raise your hands so our IT department could designate you as a speaker? Mr. Powell, can you please raise your hand and unmute yourself? Mr. Hughes, can you hear us? So you could unmute yourself, raise, raise your hand, please. Please unmute yourself. Mr. Powell, are, is this you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you now. You may begin with your public comment. You have three minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it short. I wanted to start by uh, thanking Mr. Kuna for coming uh, out to our rally. Uh, this is, the, a lot of us have been waiting from March to hear from anyone from the school board uh, we had a very encouraging conversation. More importantly, um, we talked about many options of possibly still continuing to have a public school in District 1. Uh, he's promised to continue to have communication with the community, and uh, I believe he's a man of his word, so I look forward to uh, future engagements uh, with the community and working together uh, to figure out how to uh, make sure District 1 is represented and uh <clears throat> and our children are put forth first uh -huh. um 
I'll submit the rest of my time to uh, any other community member that wants to speak. I have a Zyra McLeod who's going to say a few words as well. Go, go. She's also a community member as well. Former school board go, member. Go. Former school board member also. Hello, this is uh, Dr. Zyra McLeod. Uh, thank you again for allowing me to speak. I feel but I'm a member of and a stakeholder of Inglewood since 1972, and I served on the Inglewood School Board. I'd like to commend uh, some of the board members, Margaret. Uh, Margaret Evans, who assisted her school and has been so wonderful in making it work. So we wanna give a shout out to Margaret. And I wanna thank also uh, the the new county superintendent, the acting superintendent. I find him to be very up and eager, eager to work with the Inglewood community. As uh, Mr. Hughes, Hughes has said, parent and community action team, along with our other partner organization on the agenda. Because in 1990, Inglewood School Board passed an action item with parent and community action program with most of our schools. And we have those items where, when it was passed. And therefore, we're asking our representative and board members, as well as the county to, to support us in bringing back on the school campus outside of the school, our community uh, an action program with parent, community, business, educators, legislators, and all of them, which is a part and made up for the betterment of our schools and our city. So with that being in place, I'm sure we can work together to have a workable uh, situation because we don't want to be looked at, at as adversaries. We don't, we want to be looked at, at as friends because thank I'm you, sure we thank all you, want the same thank thing. Thank you, Dr. McLeod. We want Inglewood to be the top. Thank you. Dr. Kuna, that concludes our public comments for tonight. Thank you, uh, Ms. Zambrano. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, number nine, uh, reporting out of closed session, closed session actions. Um, in closed session, the county administrator approved the following settlement agreements. SE082021-2022 and SE09, 2021-2022. Next we have item 10, which is the uh, consent calendar action items um, for uh, human resources. So for item uh, 10A20, uh, the approval of amendment to contract for employment of chief academic officer between Inglewood Unified School District and Dr. Bernadette Lucas. Um, I would like to report out that the co uh, contract is amended uh, to uh, change the time of the con or the dates of the contract. So the contract will now run from July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. Next, we have items 10A21 and 10A22. Those are the approval of contracts for employment of the Chief Human Resources Officer, uh, Dr. Nick Stephanie, and the Chief Business Official, uh, Dr. Marguerite Williams. Uh, the terms of this contract or these contracts are also effective from July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. Uh, need to share that the annual salary of both positions uh, shall be um, placed on the Chief, uh, Chief uh, Officer salary schedule and will be placed at step four on that schedule. Uh, both positions will progress to step five on July 1st, 2023. In lieu of reimbursement for mileage, uh, both positions will receive a vehicle stipend of $350 per month uh, to defray any expenses associated with the use of their personal vehicle. Also, uh, these positions will receive a $40 monthly phone stipend for district issued uh, or for personal use of their cell phone. And both positions will also receive 
uh, district health and welfare benefits uh, that are uh, commensurate with those uh, given to uh, other certificated management uh, positions. Are there any provisions um, for um, them if they leave and we um, are, if the work is not satisfactory and, yes. um, you know, um, they have for some reason um, to be let go and we don't have to pay them through their contract? Yes, so there's, there's termination clauses, uh, termination without cause, termination with cause, and then a uh, non-renewal of contract as well as a mutual agreement. Uh, so if a termination is to take place without cause, then the district is required to pay uh, the individuals six months of their salary or the remainder of their contract, whichever is uh, less. And then if there is termination with cause, uh, there is no requirement for the district to uh, pay the individual going forward. And legally, how is this uh, determined? So and I say that because I have great reservations with the position of the CBO. We have had, and this is no disrespect to you, Dr. Williams, but um, I've been on this board long enough to know that we have paid people that did not satisfy the job requirement. And because of their contract, we were obligated to pay them through the end of their contract and the district lost a considerable amount of money. So I really hope those safeguards are there because we cannot afford, that is a very crucial position. And I have seen it over and over and over um, be abused and um, they leave, you know? If they leave, I know we don't have to pay them, but if they stay and they're not doing the job that's required, I don't want that contract to be such that, um, you know, they just get paid and we just tell them bye. So um, I have not read it uh, in debt where there are clauses that indicate what is acceptable and what would deem a person's termination? I mean, there are some, you know, definitely some egregious actions that would cause that. But um, I'm, I'm just really concerned about that. And I want that uh, on the record. I, I, I can appreciate that, Dr. McGee. And yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, and in, with regards to uh, termination with cause, uh, that is the responsibility of the supervisor of those positions to make sure that those pieces are documented uh, so that it does not put the district in a position to have to pay out if the position or if the individual is not doing what is required of the position. So thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on. Um, we need to, uh, so those are, we're, we're now going to consider items 10A1 through 10A22. Uh, does the board have any other questions or comments regarding any of the other items on 10A1 through 10A22? I Mr. have a, a question. Let me see. It's very hard for me to see yours. So I'm going to look at um, um, my document. I'm looking at 10A4. Um, um, no, not four. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Basically, um, if we're in, I'm looking at Keenan. They're giving a control service agreement for loss, uh, loss uh, control service agreement. That's uh, 10A5. Uh, Let's see. Okay. 
is that a part of what you're um, asking the board to approve on? Um, the only thing I have to say about that particular contract, Keenan does a good job. I think we've, um, um, you know, really recovered. Um, our, our losses have gone down. The only thing that I'm asking this um, board and this cabinet to consider, we are a black and brown um, school district. And when we educate our students and we expect them to go out and get jobs, they go out and they get amazing undergraduate and graduate degrees, law degrees. And I'm concerned that we do not vet these companies in terms of their diversity. I look at Keenan's, um, um, that particular, I mean, they've made some improvements, but when it comes to the, um, that particular division, there is absolutely no diversity. And if we don't make a um, stand to at least invite them to be more um, diverse in their company, then I really don't want them getting our, our, our money because it's important to me that um, we take care of the students that we educate. And if they can't get a job and qualify for these contracts that we put out, um, then I think on some level we should send a message, you know, shore up your um, business practices with more people of color so that our students have an opportunity to work in these um, various um, uh, corporations and companies. And I've done my research on several of the contracts that we give out. And when I see that there is no diversity and we're spending our money, um, I just have a problem with it. Those are my comments for the record. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Ms. Evans, did you have a, a, a comment? It seemed like you were gonna make a comment. Well, I was, but that Dr. McGee has covered. Thank you, Dr. McGee. No comments at this time. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, uh, Dr. Stephanie, if, it, if at all possible, maybe we can check to see if any of our uh, providers, uh, particularly Keenan, even offer any kind of uh, internships that uh, maybe extended to uh, our uh, students, uh, which would be a good start. They do internships, but their internships are not for um, high school students. Mm. Okay. They, they, they did do a, a good job in pulling together. I mean, but they had to fight for it. And I'm looking at a lot of companies that are, are you know, ignoring um, students of color and like I said, if we're gonna give our hard dollars, we need to make a decision. And I think if they know that that's something that they really should um, be committed to, um, diversity and inclusion. And when I'm not seeing it, like I said, I've got a profile on every last one of these companies that are on this agenda tonight. And it's it's almost heartbreaking that, you know, um, our, our, our student population is not being represented. And when we're making these decisions to bring them on board to represent our school district, um, it needs to be true representation. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments regarding items 10A1 through 10A22? Okay, so uh, thank you for your questions and comments. Uh, items 10A1 through 10A22 are each approved. Moving on to item 10B, Educational Services Division. Uh, does our board have any questions or comments regarding items 10B1 through 10B35? No comments. All right, being that there are no comments or questions, items 10B1 through 10B35 are each approved. Uh, item 10C, Business Services Division. Does our board have any questions or comments regarding items 10C1 through 10C28? 
We are renewing subscriptions, no comments. All right, being that there are no comments uh, or questions, items 10C1 through 10C28 are each approved. Uh, we will now move to item 10D, measure GG and facilities. Uh, does the board have any questions or comments regarding items 10D1 through 10D7? No comments. Okay, being that there are no comments or questions, uh, items 10D1 through 10D7 are each approved. And now we will move to item 10E, County Administrator. Uh, does our board have any questions or comments regarding items 10E1 through 10E5? No comments. Okay, being that there are no comments or questions, items 10E1 through 10E5 are each approved. Next, we'll move on to item 11A, approval of minutes. Does the board have any questions or comments regarding the minutes of the regular board meeting held on um, June 17th? Is this for June 17th or June 22nd? June 22nd. Marisa, should this be uh, June 22nd? It should be June 22nd, our meeting last week. Yes, I'll, I'll make that revision. That's what I think. Okay. I move that the minutes from June 22nd be approved. All right. Thank you, Ms. Evans. So since there are no comments or questions, uh, the minutes of the June 22nd Board of Education meeting are approved. Uh, we will go on to uh, board member remarks. Uh, Ms. Evans, I will let you handle the order. Thank you. Let's start this week since I forgot Mr. Myers last week. With Mr. Myers, if you have any comments. Sure, thank you, Madam President. I'd just like to say to um, the comments tonight, um, we're greatly appreciated to Ms. Laverne, Mr. Hughes, Mr. Powell, and uh, Dr. McLeod. Thank you for uh, letting us know uh, what the community is thinking. So we would greatly appreciate it. Mr. Guzman, sad to see you go, buddy. And take care, man. Um, I guess it was fun while it lasted, right? Um, and also, Dr. McGee, um, you are so uh, on point with your comments. Um, I shared this during my agenda review as far as casting a broader net, um, particularly in those communities um, that look like us you know, so that we can have that great representation. So I appreciate your comments tonight. And I'll digress right there. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Castillo? Thank you, you have any Yeah, real quick, just want to thank you, Mr. Guzman, for, I'm, I'm not a numbers guy. It's the reason why I went to law school. I don't like numbers too much, but you made it very simple. Every meeting we had discussed budget and numbers. So I greatly appreciate your service to this community and to this district. And it's been sad to see you leave, but I'm happy for your new beginnings and your new endeavors. Um, and I also like to thank Dr. Funya for addressing the public earlier today. Uh, I know that level of communication is much appreciated from the community and it's something that we hope to see continue. And as we move together as a community, as a school board, as an administration, I know we're gonna make the right decisions for our students and we're gonna make sure that we're taking all voices into consideration. So with that, I, I close my public comments. Thank you. Ms. Hammonds? Yes, I'd like to thank um, what um, Brandon, Brandon had mentioned, um, Dr. Carlos McGee, her comments, and also the comments from the uh, people who are on tonight. Appreciate them very much. And also congratulations to the retirees as well. And appreciate Dr. Kuna for stepping in. Thank you. Thank you. And to my wonderful vice president, Dr. McGee. That always has something to say to stir the pot, but if I don't say it, I don't know who will. But uh, uh, Dr. Kuna, thank you for stepping in from Dr. Torres. We miss her and we're sending her lots of love and prayers for her um, speedy recovery, but you're doing an excellent job and we appreciate that. And, um, 
Mr. Stefan, I'm glad you're on. I called you today. They said you weren't feeling well, so I hope you're feeling better. And um, I think we get a break between now and August. So I am so happy to hear that. And again, uh, Dr. Guzman, we wish you well, but I will call you if I need you. You know that. I have all of your numbers. And um, that that's about it. I want to thank everybody for their um, really, you know, reports. That's important. It's a little repetitious for me sometimes, but I think about the public and those that may not have heard it or seen it from the last board meeting. And so they said repetition breeds retention. So hopefully um, they're retaining some of the information. Have a nice um, month off. I will see you at the Casey um, conference in July. And um, for those of you that feel overworked, get some rest. You owe it to yourself, get some rest. Thank you, Dr. McGee. And thank you everyone for attending tonight's meeting. I've made several comments or a few comments tonight, but uh, Dr. Puna, I can tell that you have met with the community because I didn't feel the tension tonight. I really thank you for that. We discussed um, what we were going to do with Warren Lane during our agenda review. And you know we talked about this and it, I can tell that you smoothed out some, some rough areas there. So I thank you for that. And I hope that the community is satisfied and will be satisfied with the decisions that we have to make, but uh, we have to move forward. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Guzman, again. I'm going to miss you because I can always ask you questions and I, I just like the way you get back to me and the way you make things so clear to all of us. So as again, Dr. my namesake, <laughs> Dr. Marguerite, uh, welcome aboard, but uh, you see you've got some big shoes to fill. I keep saying that, but we are really going to miss uh, Raphael. And next month, like you said, we are off. No board meetings next month. We will be back again in August. So everybody enjoy your month off. Thank you so much for tonight. Good night. Thank you, uh, board members. Uh, moving on to item 13, uh, our county administrator remarks. Um, you know, I, I wanna echo a lot of what people have shared, but uh, you know, I, I do wanna share that uh, uh, Ms. Laverne, I, I appreciate your comments. And one of the, the things that we have talked about is making sure that, um, you know, in the, the closure of Warren Lane right now, it, it does not turn into uh, what happened to Woodworth. Um, and we will maintain the, the facilities over there. We are talking as a team on what, uh, what can go over to uh, Woodworth so that it is, or uh, uh, to Warren Lane, so that it does not have a, a feel of abandonment um, and so that we can maintain that property. Um, so the, those are some things that we are discussing. I want to thank um, our other public comments and I, and I wanna thank the, the community, uh, you know, as, as I had a chance to go out and speak to uh, some of them. And, and I really do appreciate the fact that even if we did not see eye to eye on everything, it was a very um, productive uh, conversation. Uh, I do want to say we have much work to do uh, still. Um, you know, there, there's a lot that we as a district need to do to uh, make sure that uh, you know, the communication continues um, and that, that people feel heard um, and that uh, their decisions are uh, part of our process moving forward. Um, so we, we will continue to do that. I do appreciate uh, your patience with us and I do appreciate you, um, you know, listening to uh, what I had to share uh, today and, and having a cordial uh, conversation. And, and I agree with Ms. McLeod. This is this is not adversarial at all. Um, the district is part of this community. We are not working against this community. Um, and we are uh, with all intent trying to be good neighbors. So we will continue those conversations. Um, Mr. Guzman, I am going to miss you. Um, I, I think you are excellent at your job. 
Um, I, I know that it is a huge loss for us and a huge gain for uh, Beverly Hills. Um, but I, I just want to share that, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, really I, I, I measure people by is their integrity. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, you announced your or, or were picked up a, a position in, in Beverly Hills uh, about a month ago, um, you could have easily just packed it in here in, in Inglewood. And you have worked every day. Um, to make sure that what needs to get done is done. Um, and I have even had conversations with you on the weekends um, regarding work. And so the fact that you continued to um, do what needed to be done here in our district, knowing that you had somewhere else to go, um, it just speaks volumes to who you are as a person and, and something that will carry you um, through your career. And I appreciate that. Um, and I just wanted everybody else to, to know that. And so we have a, a little certificate of, uh, appreciation, uh, for you, uh, Mr. Guzman, and we wish you all the best, um, as you move on. I know we have you for one more day. Um, but thank you for all of your work, uh, in this school district. And, uh, that being said, um, I will close out my comments um, and move to item 14, which is uh, our next meeting. Um, and that is uh, scheduled for August 10th. Is that is that accurate, uh, Marisa? I, I, I don't know why I kept hearing August 11th as a, a board meeting day, but it is, it is August 10th confirmed? Yes. Okay. Yes, Perfect. August 10th. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, um, thank you everyone for uh, an amazing meeting. Um, our meeting will stand adjourned at uh, 6.41 p.m. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. <laughs>